Welcome. My name is Zeynep Gümüş and I'm an associate professor at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. Today I will present to you FOSNITVIS, a web-based platform for kinase enrichment analyses and visualizing phosphoproteomics networks. The motivation behind the development of FOSNITVIS is that we participate in multiple consortia where proteomics datasets are generated. One of them is the Clinical Proteomics Tumor Analysis CPTEC Consortium, and the other one is the Human Immunology Project, or HIPC Consortium. In both these studies, the proteomics experiments yield information on which protein and which site is phosphorylated. So for example, if we look at a cartoon representation of a protein here, which we call target or substrate protein, uh, a site on it is increased in phosphorylation in red, and a site on it is decreased in phosphorylation, which is blue. And these are all cartoons, of course. And um, the phosphorylation event is achieved by a kinase protein, a different kind of protein. However, from these experiments, we do not know which kinase is the causal kinase for the changes in the phosphorylation of this protein. So the question, one question that we want to answer is, how do we infer aberrant kinases? And then once we infer this kinase protein, we want to visually represent and explore the interaction networks of these kinase substrate networks. So here we just depict a one protein, one kinase interaction. But as you can imagine, from a massive omics data set, we have many such interactions. And the other thing is, in some proteins, the phosphorylation site is increased or decreased, so we have multiple phosphorylation sites. So the one question is, how do we simultaneously also represent the altered protein phosphorylation sites all in one visualization tool? To answer the first question, which is how to infer the aberrant kinases, we typically perform a kinase enrichment analysis. Here, we try to probabilistically predict which kinase is most likely to have changed the phosphorylation of the proteins that we see in our proteomics experiment. And for this, in FOSNETVIS, we use fast gene set enrichment analysis, but there are also many others. And in order to do enrichment analysis, we need a database of known kinase substrate interactions. And for that, we use Phosphocyte Plus, which is the most popular and most used for, uh, kinase substrate interaction data library, which includes thousands of known interactions. More recently, there are other libraries, such as Lewis Cantley Lab's most recent publications, but those are more complex. So, and um, these kinase substrate interactions differ between different types of cellular processes. For example, we have a hot tumor kinase substrate interaction and a cold tumor kinase substrate interaction. And you see that not only the interactions change in terms of who interacts with who, but also the phosphorylation levels change. So it's important to be able to represent all of this. In addition, uh, when we go to literature, there are tools that represent networks. So, for example, the most famous one being Cytoscape. However, it does not have an enrichment analysis component. And also the visualizations are in two dimensions. Furthermore, there is no information on phosphocytes that we can add here. At the same time, uh, we have developed a ProNetView CCRC website previously for the CPTEC consortium. However, this does not support user input and the visualization of already, and it only visualizes already built in networks. The overall architecture and main components of FOSNITVIS are represented in this figure. Users can either perform kinase enrichment analysis and then visualize their resulting networks or directly visualize an already existing kinase substrate network that they have, or multiple networks they have. Kinase enrichment analysis is performed through an RShiny app using FGSEA, where the user has the option to customize labels and also adjust parameters. And network visualization is through a web browser where the user can perform node queries, animations, thresholding, and pan and zoom. The visualization output shows the kinase, for example, here in a triangle, and the target proteins can have one or more phosphocytes that is visualized directly, and the user can take snapshots, screen recordings, or animations of the visualizations. 
With, fo with Fost NetVest, the users can build their own kinase substrate interaction networks only from experimental differential phosphorylation results without any coding requirements. Here is a snapshot of an input file for the kinase enrichment analysis uh, RShiny app, and Phosphocyte ki plus kinase substrate interaction dataset is already implemented within Fos NetVest, and it uses an R package for fast gene set enrichment analyses. Once we infer kinases, then we can go to step two and visualize all relevant network data simultaneously. These would include nodes, edges, and their customized attributes. For attributes, we can change kinase size, edge weight, edge color, target protein size, phosphocyte IDs, log to fold change, and p-values. For the network visualizations, we have implemented these in 3G 3GS and 3D Forcegraph. And voila, here we have a snapshot of the FosNetWiz network visualization user interface where we have a toy network in the middle with the kinase is a triangle, even self phosphorylation is represented and we have proteins that are phosphorylated with multiple phosphocytes. On the left we have a control panel, on the right we have the figure legend. Now we will have a quick demo of FosNetWiz. FosNetWiz is freely available through the web address fosnetwiz.app. When you go to the FosNetWiz homepage, there are some instructions on and information on the tool and a tab for uploading data for kinase enrichment analyses, a tab for network visualizations, or for exploring existing networks. In addition, there's detailed tutorial, FAQ section, and contact us. So if we click on the upload data for kinase enrichment analysis, we go to the R Shiny interface, where on top, there's instructions on how to format the data, where all you need is a tab delimited text file or protein accession numbers and log to fold changes. In addition, you optionally, the user can also provide phosphocyte IDs and the p-values. In the next section, the user has the option to adjust the input parameters for enrichment based on their needs or change gene uh, output network node labels. And finally, here, the user inputs their tab delimited text file, which in the format as specified above, and runs the analysis. So let's go back to the original homepage. And here, once the kinase enrichment analysis is run, then uh, we can upload this information to the network visualization section. And in network visualization, the input file, all it needs is a kinase ID and a target ID that are required. All the rest of the attributes are optional. These optional at attributes include kinase size, kinase activity, edge weight, edge color, target size, phosphocyte ID, log to fold change of phosphorylation, and p-value of phosphorylation. And the user can input one or more data sets. And then, uh, once the network visualization is run, I'm going to show you, in for the purposes of the demo, an existing network. So here, this is a time zero of SARS-CoV-2 network, which changes over time. So if we go to 24 hours, these are much more pronounced, for example. And this is a 3D network. And now we may want to have the labels so that we see what's happening here, CSNK2A1, where the targets of this kinase are predominantly increased in phosphorylation. But we may find 3D a little confusing. So in that case, we switch easily to 2D and then add the labels. And then we can see the same node in 3D, 2D. And here we can also see which, um, what are the um, specific sites that are phosphorylated on its target proteins and their levels of phosphorylation. And then here is, here is the um, site ID. And let's go back to 3D. And in addition, we may want to see how this network changes over time. So from time zero to time 24 hours, we can see that the phosphorylation levels are changing significantly. So we can stop the animation, record this, or take a sc screenshot. And if we go back to the original, um, we can also change the background based on the color the scheme that we like, which may work better for our specific purposes. And then also change the filters in terms of what is the specific cutoff for phosphorylation. And, um, and then also go back to resetting it. 
So this is just one example of an application of FOSNETVIS. Thank you for your attention. FOSNETVIS is developed at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai through the generous funding of multiple organizations. For feedback, you can email me or contact us anonymously through the FOSNETVIS web interface.